This is part two of rewriting the Percy Jackson TV show because I didn't like it. In part one, we rewrote the monologue at the beginning, which I kind of think didn't need to be there. And in part two, we're rewriting the first scene at the Met. If you're interested to see where this journey goes, hit that subscribe button. If you think I am wrong, argue with me in the comments. Now we're gonna write the actual first scene in the show. There's no PDF of Percy Jackson online. So I started transcribing it like I did for the monologue. And halfway through, I just realized I need to get rid of most of it. I haven't read Percy Jackson in kind of a while. So I picked up Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and I read chapter one. Oh, OMG, I love the first chapter. <laughs> I love the first chapter of the book. It totally held up. Like, yes, it was written for kids, but I still really enjoyed it now that I'm an adult. Wow. I'm going to take elements from that and I'm going to put it into the first scene in the TV show. The first scene is when they're at the Met and Mrs. Dodds attacks. Key things we have to do, we have to show that Percy Jackson is a daydreamer and an accidental troublemaker. We have to show Grover is there to protect him. He's more reserved, nervous. We show that Cheer oh, Mr. Bruner has something to hide. We start off in a school bus. Now this is exactly what happens in the book. We have the little exchange in the school bus. Earlier in the chapter, it mentioned how in Percy's field trips, some things would go really wrong. So I want to have some just really quick cuts to what he mentioned. We have he accidentally hit a school bus with a cannon and he accidentally dropped everyone in a pool at an aquarium. <laughs> Now we got to get to the Met. In the book, it mentions there is a storm brewing above. All right, in the show, we just have Mr. Bruner going on and on. And it's very boring. And I know it sets stuff up for the future. But we really don't need to set all that up for the future. It, it's redundant. We got to show that Percy has dyslexia. But for some reason, he can read Greek letters. In the book, we have Nancy snickering to her friends while Mr. Bruner's trying to talk and Percy's getting really upset about it. We really need something to happen that makes it so Mrs. Dodd snaps at Percy so we can see her kind of dynamic. And then also in the book, it mentions that at one point, Percy whispered to Grover that Mrs. Dodd's was like totally not human. And Grover said, you're absolutely right. It was just mentioned it wasn't happening but i kind of want that to happen because it'll show how like oh wait grover kind of knows something or wait maybe i'm just reading too much into that like it'll give a little bit of mystery you know okay then in the book we have percy and mr bruner have an exchange about chronos which shows that percy does pay attention to mr bruner's class so I kept it, I, I made it a lot shorter. In the book, it sets up that the gods and the titans fought and the gods won, which kind of lays the backdrop for the story about how the gods are fighting. So I'm going to throw that in here. And there's a key moment where... Percy Jackson gets upset with Nancy Boba Fett and it looks as though the water is reaching out of the fountain and pulling her in and then she yells, Percy pushed me. Don't worry, I'll read the whole thing out at the end. This is key because now Mrs. Dodds is going to be like, you have to come with me and of course that's going to lead to the whole fight. Look, I know a lot of you out there do not enjoy the movie. And I'm not going to say it was great. You know, it it barely had any of the things the book had other than some Greek mythology. The characters were too old. There were a whole slew of problems. But it had good action. I'm going to write this scene a little bit 
like the movie. Okay, we need that action. In the TV show, it's like she pounces on him and then goes poof. Like, I barely even saw what happened. It was so lame. I need the action. Uh, Mr. Bruner is going to come in with the pen. And then after the action, of course, Percy comes outside and no one remembers who Mrs. Dodds was. I got rid of the whole thing with his mom that was in the TV show. And I know that connects to later when she says the poem to him again. But I just thought it was boring. I feel like y'all are going to come at me for saying everything was boring. But I mean, the point of a TV show is to keep your audience's attention. In coming scenes, in the coming scenes, we are going to set up who Percy's mom is. We're going to set up what their relationship is. And we're going to make the audience care about her so that when she inevitably, quote unquote, dies, the audience cares. The show doesn't have to just be serious you know you have a little bit of the seriousness but there's this lightheartedness that comes with percy jackson because he just he doesn't take himself too seriously i would say a show this is done very well in is avatar the last airbender i mean in that one minute and 41 seconds we had serious suspense danger the three of them and momo were wandering through the desert are they gonna have enough water to survive are they gonna find ang the fate of the world hangs in the balance and then to lighten it up we got the cactus juice but it doesn't feel out of place it fits even though Sokka's lightening the vibe we still have katara steadfast in the mission now, I know Avatar and Percy Jackson are totally different TV shows, but in a way, they're also not. It's a 12-year-old boy trying to save the world. He could go on some monologue about how rough everything is, or he could laugh it off, but we see it in his eyes how much he's fighting. And if every other scene is people talking slowly with violin music then how am i supposed to care about the moments when it really really should be people talking slowly with violin music all this to say if you think i'm wrong let me know in the comments if you think i'm right or you're at least curious hit that subscribe button percy jackson pilot scene two Interior, school bus, day. Percy and Grover sit in front of Nancy, female, 12. Nancy throws bits of peanut butter sandwich at Grover. Percy whispers to Grover, I am going to kill her. Grover whispers back, it's okay, I love peanut butter. Nancy hits Grover right in the back of the head. Percy jumps up. That's it. Grover grabs him and pulls him back to his seat. You know who'll get blamed if anything happens. Like this field trip will go better than any of my last ones. Quick cuts, too. Exterior, battlefield, day, flashback. The school bus looks like a cannon hit it. Percy, eight, stands next to a smoking cannon. Interior, day, interior, aquarium, flashback. Percy, ten, and his class walk across a catwalk over a shark pool. Percy leans against a lever. Everyone falls in the water. End quick cuts. Exterior, met, day. There's a storm brewing outside. Interior, the met, Greek exhibit, same time. Statues from Greek mythology, including one of Perseus holding Medusa's head, surround the students, including Nancy, Percy, and Grover. They stand around Mr. Bruner, male, 50s, in a wheelchair. Nancy and other students are snickering as Mr. Bruner tries to speak. Mrs. Dodds, female, 50s, wears a leather jacket, is nearby. Percy looks down at his worksheet. The letters swirl around. Mr. Bruner. What you see here... They are not fictions. They are not fantasies. What you see here are the truest and deepest parts of yourselves. Do Greek guys just walk around naked? Will you shut up? Silence, Percy. And then Percy whispers to Grover, I swear she's not human. You're absolutely right. Friends, gods, monsters, heroes, what you see here in this room are reminders of what we are capable of. Mr. Jackson, perhaps you'll tell us what this picture represents. 
Percy stares at the picture. The Greek letters on the sign rearrange themselves into English. It reads, Kronos. That's Kronos, right? Yes. And he did this because, well, Kronos was the king god. God? Titan. And he didn't trust his kids who were gods. So, um, Kronos ate them, right? But his wife hid Zeus away, and then when he grew up, he tricked Kronos into barfing up his siblings? Ew, Percy, why do you know that? And then the Titans and gods fought, and the gods won. Good, Mr. Jackson. With that, we can break for lunch. <clears throat> Exterior, the Met, moments later. Percy and Grover sit on the edge of a fountain eating lunch. A storm brews overhead. No lightning. Mr. Bruner sits reading a book. I wish Mr. Bruner would stop picking on me. Better than Nancy. Yeah, except it's usually both. Nancy walks over and dumps her lunch on Grover's lap. I heard my name. Percy jumps up. That was really it. What are you going to do? Call your mommy? Oh, no, 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 no. Percy lunges at Nancy and trips over his own feet. Water lurches up from the fountain and grabs Nancy. She's pulled into the fountain by the water. Percy pushed me. What? No, I... Come with me, Percy. Mrs. Dodds begins walking back into the Met. Percy follows. Interior, the Met, Greek exhibit. Moments later, the exhibit is empty except for Percy and Mrs. Dodds. You've been giving us problems, honey. Yes, ma'am. Do you really think you would get away with it? Uh, I'll, I'll try harder, ma'am. We're not fools, Percy Jackson. Confess and you will suffer less pain. Ma'am, I don't... Your time is up. Mrs. Dodd's eyes begin to glow. Her fingers stretch into talons. Her jacket melts into wings. Yellow fangs grow from her mouth. A guttural sound comes from her throat. Mrs. Dodd lunges at Percy, who rolls out of the way. Mrs. Dodd takes another try. Percy stands and runs away, but Mrs. Dodd grabs him. She flies over the air and holds him there. Where is the bolt, Percy? What? Mr. Bruner wheels into the Met. What ho, Percy? Mr. Bruner throws a ballpoint pen at Percy. Percy catches it and turns, and it turns into a magnificent sword. Mrs. Dodds starts swooping toward the ground. Percy swings the sword into her. When the sword goes through Mrs. Dodds, she dissolves into a pile of sand and Percy tumbles to the ground. Percy stands up, sword in hand. The, si the sand flies away. Percy looks around. Mr. Bruner is gone. Exterior, the Met, moments later. Percy runs out of the Met holding a ballpoint pen. Mr. Bruner sits reading his book. Percy? Mr. Bruner, what just happened? She, the Mrs. Dodds and then... What? What is the matter? Who is Mrs. Dodds? I... The end. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think.